everything good? Okay, good. Hi everyone, how are you? Must be doing fine. I was just checking my audio video, so everything is good. Anyways, in the last part, we were talking about all the invertebrates, their categories, the videos. In this part, we are not going to cover very difficult portion, but comparatively easy portion, but that's still you have to watch this video and understand the things up because you're learning that for the very first time. I'm going to start sharing my screen and let's start it up. Okay, so first I'll be telling you what we are going to cover. We will be covering here. Okay, that's working. We will be covering here the chordates introduction, chordate classification, and these category five says reptilia, avis, and mammalia, and uh, mammalia, and what others are the categories that we have to go through. Now you will get to know. First of all, guys, we have to understand what is chordate and what is no, known chordate. See, uh, I told you this earlier also that there are two categories. One is known chordate and one is chordate. And how do we differentiate both of them? We do differentiate them on the basis of the notochord, nerve cord. Like these are the things that written, that's written on the screen up there. Yeah. So uh, any of the phylum of animal having at least some stages in life, in some stages, they might be having the notochord, which is dorsally situated on the backside uh, and, and central nervous system part. I mean, that mainly have the nerve cord and the gill slit and including and including the vertebrate, lancelet and tunicate. And these actually vertebrate, lancelet and tunicate, they are under the corded category. They have this notochord and the nerve cord. I'm going to repeat myself that chordate used to have few things which are common in all chordate. That's what that's why we say they are the chordate. First, they have the notochord. I told you this thing earlier also that notochord, this is actually nothing, but this is the uh, juvenile form of uh, vertebral column. Like ye bada okay, vertebral, vertebral column. Banega. So this is like the immature vertebral column. Hold on for a second. Immature doesn't, I mean, the vertebral column used to be very hard in us, but this notochord is a hard structure, road-like structure present on the dorsal side. I'm going to write this, uh, write it for you, hard and road-like structure, but not uh, harder like the vertebral column. Notochord is present in all of the cortex. In certain stage, it in certain organism, I will say this is in the notochord stage only. But then uh, in another organism, this is modified to form the vertebral column. And same is with the nerve cord. Nerve cord is a group of nerve cells, which is again passing nearby the notochord on the dorsal side. Group of nerve cells, which is moving, that we have the spinal cord inside vertebral column. So that thing is also there in all of the cord. In our case, that's very much modified. We call it as the spinal cord. But then there are lower chordate where the spinal cord is not that much developed. So we call it as the nerve cord, that a group of nerve cells are passing and they are making central nervous system. And gill slits are the slit, gill slit in embryonic stage. We also have a little slit kind of structure, you know, pharyngeal gill slits are there on the pharynx part when we are embryo, not like us. So pharyngeal gill slit on the pharyngeal region on the pharynx. It's in the embryonic stage that is present, but in lower chordate, it's present throughout. Like if I talk about the fishes, they have the gills, they have the proper slits and everything, but in our case, that's not there. In the embryonic stage, I repeat myself, and that is only pharyngeal gill slit. So now this is an introduction of the chordate, that chordate used to have these things. Now all the chordate have these things in different uh, ways. Depending upon that, there is a proper classification that we will be understanding. Phylum chordate is further categorized into subphylum, vertebrates, cephalochordate, and urochordate. Subphylum vertebrate have a proper backbone. The notochord has developed to form the backbone. It is further categorized into two subclasses, I will say. One is Pisces and one is Tetrapoda. Pisces include all the fishes. And tetrapoda, tetra means four, cord means feet, four feet. So birds, reptile, amphibian, mammal, they all are under the tetrapoda subclass. Now, talking about subphylum cephalochordate and urochordate, that's on the basis of nerve cord. Urochordate, here notochord is present into the urochordate here. Notochord is present 
only into the larval stage and it disappears in adult that's why i was saying now that these organisms used to have the notochord but they are present in different stages so in this case notochord is present but that's only in the larval stage and after that it disappears for example tunicates or sea squirts other than that into the urochordata there is one more example herdmania herdmania is also known as sea potato doesn't have a proper shape they have a complete digestive system okay so that's about the urochordate one now next is cephalochordate first of all cephalo what is used for head they have a little head appearance at them cephalochordate here notochord is present from anterior end to the posterior end because in the urochordate one i was saying the notochord is present and that is present only in the tail of larval stage notochord is present but only in the tail region but in cephalochordate this is present like suppose this is a body and this is the anterior part and this is the posterior part so this is present throughout the structure of the organism from anterior part to the posterior part of the body not in the larval stage or but throughout the life matlab including larval also but that's if i look at it example is amphioxus lancelet so with this guys we are done with the fellow chordate category also and uh, now we will be talking about subphylum vertebrae and let me see in your notes also if you're left with something no we're not left with something the next thing that we have to understand we have to understand the classification of subphylum i have told you that they are having two categories further but then we have to understand in that in detail so here it is subphyla vertebrate this is further divided into two division the one is agnatha and one is gnathostomata gnatha what is used for the jaws i mean i'm going to show you my teeth but jaws are too much deep little deep uh, so i'm not going to show that on camera so uh, agnatha is locked jaw as in sorry they lack jaw agnatha a means absent gnatha is absent so jaw is absent uh, and a class under it is cyclostomata that's what i did not mention till now so now i'm mentioning gnathostomata is actual vertebrata which used to having jaw and they are having two super classes pisis and tetrapoda they are having fins they are having limbs tetra means four feet so i have told you these category earlier that pisces yeah they are of two type bony fishes and uh, cartilaginous fishes chondritic thighs they are known as cartilaginous fishes and ostic thighs they are known as bony fishes okay so now first we will be understanding the cyclostomata thing and then we will be moving further so the first thing cyclostomata even before i proceed with anything look at the picture if you look uh, you know at the mouth of them that's really horrible I don't know why I did not add the picture. Give me a second. I'm gonna show you that. I'll add the picture here, na. So I'm gonna just uh, no. I'm gonna not gonna stop the screen share. I'll just add the pic uh, add the picture into the presentation directly. Great. They are blood sucking. I tell you. let me just confirm whether you can see the screen yeah you can see it i'm just going to make sure that you can see it so this is the picture on the front side you see faces like this but actually they have strong jawless teeth there that's used for sucking blood that sucking blood thing is known as sanguivorous but they are blood feeders 
you i don't know whether you have seen or not but they kind of you know attach to the shark body or the big fish body with the help of teeth and keep on just you know sucking the blood and that's their feed yeah. petromycin example also known as lamprey so yeah they all act as ectoparasite cyclostomata they all act as ectoparasite their body is elongated and they can have 6 to 15 pairs of gills for respiration okay so their skin is smooth soft slimy and scaleless okay they have a suctoral type of mouth sucking type of and obviously they have the notochord throughout their life it is present as you can see they have the dorsal fin caudal fin and anterior fins are present like in two ways body is elongated and external gill slits are there that information is much enough yeah one thing that you should remember that they have two chambered heart and they have a closed type of circulation so these are all features that we have learned into the cyclostomata category now we have to move further we will be talking further the thing is Let's talk about the next category, which is about the pieces itself. Pieces it include all the bony and cartilaginous fishes. You know, bony fishes, the cells of the bony fishes are known as osteic osteocytes. Like you know, the bones that we have in our body, cells of them is known as osteocyte. Wherever you see the word osteo, osten, that means they are talking about bone, and they have a protein named osten. Osten, 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 yeah. Osteo protein is there. So os o s t osteocyte. These names are so these are the osteo osteic thighs, and cartilaginous are chondrocytes. Cells of them, they are, that's the cells of them. I'm talking chondrocytes. Cyte means cell. Cells of the cartilage is known as chondrocytes. So chondrin protein is there into them. So my point is, they include all the bony and the cartilaginous fishes and. Uh, Osteic thighs and chondric thighs are there, which are their name. I have shown you the names before. I'll show you the spelling again if you're not sure of that on the next page. They're exclusively really aquatic. It's a general property that I've written up there regarding the fishes. That fishes their body is very streamlined. Streamlined body is very elongated. Why the body is streamlined like this? Because when they are you know just moving up into the water, they can you know pass on to the friction. They can just you know cause least friction. which doesn't hamper the body same is in the birds also because they have to be in air yeah so paired and unpaired fins can be present cold blooded vertebrates you know cold and warm blooded we are warm blooded we cannot change our body temperature they can for kilotons heart is two chambered auricle and ventricle so that's why and they have single circulation if you remember blood is only one time passing through the gills and just you know exchange oxygen exchange happen with the water and just moving out a lateral line system is well developed lateral line system is throughout the body they have a lateral line system means throughout the lateral line there are sensory organs fins uh, gill slit you know these things are present throughout the lateral line so the lateral line system is used for that well developed example is shark ray rohu mrigal green carp there are many fishes you can remember the name of comparison of cartilaginous and bony fishes okay so uh, cartilaginous fishes these are known as chondric thighs i'm going to tell you the spelling here chondric thighs am i writing the right right spelling i'll check it this is osteic thigh now let me check spelling in your notes these are not you know your notes by the way i'm using my personal notes it's a correct spelling okay so now if you look at the picture here 
this is a cartilaginous fish first of all you see mouth ventral position so first of all the mouth on the body this is not present on this position but on here so ventral position gill slits are there this is a fin pectoral and dorsal now if you see the design of the scale this is known as placard scales see there are many type of scales present in the fishes and they are designed on the basis of which we name them differently like you see here these are the cycloidal glenoid scales it's a design of them i have another picture of that don't worry so they have this pelvic fin anal fin if you look at the last fin here upper lobe of tail and longer than the uh, lower lobe so on the tail there are two lobes here upper one is larger if you see in this case both lobes are uh, equal in length we call it as the homo circle we call it as the hetero circle so this is used for the tail hetero means different homo means same size is there acha so yeah so one more thing there is a thing which is known as operculum in many of the fishes the gill like on the gills on the body side up there they are having a covering on it covering on it not covering covering on it that is known as operculum so in bony fishes this operculum is present which is a covering of the gills but in this case gill slits are outside present it's not covered up by the operculum these are all the differences that you have to learn okay so now this is a list of the differences i have made here scales are placoid and cycloid and tenoid in bony fishes this is the tenoid this is the cycloid you see the design placoid is in the cartilaginous fishes shark is the example but they have written bass jar here and here salmon is there they all have cycloid tenoid genoid type of scales and now you remember it now you will remember shark is cartilaginous fish mouth is ventral here terminal and tail lobes i had told you this gills are 5 to 7 pair with the slits and here cover is there operculum is there four pairs position water fins of lower density and they have the swim bladder so position water means fins lower density cartilage and oily liver little weight is there and they are having the swim bladder like we do have the gills they have the little bladder like of structure which has air in it which help them to reduce the weight because they are the bony fishes they have the bones already that bone is increasing their weight so they tend to decrease the weight by having swim bladder it's a kind of like air sac chamber of air sac kind of structure which is in there okay osmo regulation means how they you know maintain the osmotic condition in their body the water balance so this is done by urea and rectal gland urea equals all your time in mean, urea is added into the your uh, i mean urea is present into their body which is secreted as a waste product also while they excrete but it helps in maintaining osmotic uh, concentration in their blood they are having the less solute means gill secretion is there less solute means they do not release urea they mainly secrete ammonia and other solute nitrogenous actually uh, every organism needs to release excretory waste we call it as the nitrogenous waste in our case we secrete urea we are ureotelic but then in other organism they are uh, they releasing ammonia uric acid so in cartilaginous they are releasing urea as a waste product and that's maintaining their osmotic concentration also in case of bony fish is less solute not urea in too much amount ammonia can also be there okay so sensory organ is ampulla of lorenzinelli and lateral line system lateral line i have told you that throughout the body a sensory system is present which is sensing the flow of the water speed of the water ampulla of lorenzinelli is present in near the head region into the cartilaginous fishes which is actually a thermoreceptor organ which sees the temperature so just a little section and area present on the upper region that's it ampulla of lorenzinelli is just a name of it the area reproduction is internal and the fertilization development strategy variety fewer organism hold on what they have written here reproduction is internal in this case external internal means inside the body male and female gamete are fertilizing and here in the water fertilization happen acha mostly oviparity oviparity means they produce eggs ova for fertilization and here variety means some can be oviparous some can be viviparous that as it is species are being released and here acha the rate of reproduction here fewer offsprings are produced and more offsprings because into the externally many gamete can fertilize with many you know male gamete can fertilize with the female gamete so many offsprings offsprings means next generation babies baby fishes you may say so i suppose now you clearly understand the differences between cartilage and the, the bony fishes let's move forward and let uh, we are done with that yeah 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 we are done with that i thought i have forgot 
I'm forgetting to tell you something. Yeah, differences. So into the bony fishes, I have told you, you can write the examples. Uh, Rohu Katla here, though in the picture also that was written. And here, shark fish is the best example into the coat cartilaginous fishes. Now let's move forward. The next thing that we have to understand is the reptiles. Guys, reptiles, they are the crawling animal. They're the first completely land animal that which is coming out of the water because fishes are aquatic. Then there are amphibians. I should have told you amphibians first, but that's fine in the sequence of Tilia is here. Amphibian is having the dual life. Uh, I did not add amphibian into that. What? Oh, I forgot. Guys, I'm going to add a blank slide. I thought I have added it up. It's fine. I just need a blank slide to teach you that. First, I'll cover amphibian and then I'll move further. Okay, so amphi. Amphi means dual. Dual. Bios means life. Bios means life. Amphi means dual. So they have a dual mode of life. You know that. They can be in uh, land also and they can be in water also. There are certain stage of life can be in water also, but adult can, can also survive in the water. Uh, frog and ted, uh, tedpole, yeah. frog and toad and salamander, they are the best example. Okay, now talking further about their property, yes, they have a bilateral symmetry. You can just, you know, you have seen toad, so you can just write it. That's why I tell, tell an example first. So they have the bilateral symmetry. They have a complete digestive system. They are cold-blooded animals. Their skin is smooth and without scale. Okay, so next is, this is under the tetrapoda guys. Right now we are learning the tetrapoda. And here they have skin is smooth. And one thing that you have to remember guys, the respiration used to happen in many ways. They use skin also for the respiration. Their skin is very smooth and slimy. Uh, actually onto their skin, mucous glands are present. These mucous glands, they are the one which are secreting mucus and keeping their skin very slimy. Why slimy skin is there? Because slimy help, sliminess help in the easy diffusion of gases that from the skin respiration happen. And because of the mu mucus and slimy skin, easy diffusion of gases happen. Means they can easily exchange. If I talk about the tadpole, a tadpole used to have the gills in it. But a mature one used to have the skin respiration. They also have the air chamber, air sac into their body. Also, they show buccopharyngeal respiration. So these three kind of respiration happen. Buccopharyngeal means buccal cavity and the pharynx inside the mouth. But on into there is a little part in buccopharyngeal which helps in the gaseous exchange. So that's the point. Anyways, uh, so they have this air sac, you may call it as lungs of them. Their heart is three chambered. They can fastly attack on the insect. They are, you know, they, they eat insects and all. They, you know, they can protrude their tongue out and just catch the prey. So their heart is three chambered and they have the two auricles and one to ventricle. They lay eggs in water. External fertilization. So I suppose now you're very much clear about the amphibians and keeping the frog in mind, you can just talk about many examples that they, how they're moving by jumping, not all of them have a proper movement, those kinds of things. Now, one thing that you have to remember, that's the last point about the amphibian I'm telling, let me change the pen color. I did not change, change pen color till now, hold on. Are Sorry, I was speaking in the Hindi. I was searching for the mouse and I got it. 
One thing that you have to remember, amphibians, they used to have a cloaca. Like if I talk about the human, we do have a different opening of reproductive system, excretory system, digestive system, opening as an external opening where, you know, it is the not entry opening, but the exit opening. In amphibian case, a cloaca is present. It is like a common, like into their body, many system, they, op they are opening up into a common chamber. We call it as the cloaca. So excretory system, reproductive system, and the digestive system. They all system open up into the common opening. We call it as the cloaca. So cloaca is present in amphibians. Cloaca is also present in birds. I'll tell you that in avies, but please remember. They do not have the separate opening of uh, respiratory, uh, the, sorry, excretory system, reproductive system, but they have a common opening. We call it as the cloaca. We are done with amphibians with this. And I do not think I have to upload picture of the frog literally. Seriously? Seriously? Search it on your search engine. Let's move further. Next is reptiles. Reptiles, they are the first completely land animals. They have completely come on earth, but they are not walking like us, but they are crawling. The movement is like on the ground. They are also cold-blooded, breathe through their lungs. They have a three-chambered heart, exceptional crocodile, which has the four-chambered heart. It is a connecting link between the reptiles and the and the and the and the uh, mammals and the birds and on the basis of heart. And they lay eggs with tough covering. They are actually tough covering means their eggs are very, you know, hard shell. Uh, their eggs, if you have seen eggs of snakes, crocodiles, snakes, you must have seen many videos are around there. So very hard leathery eggs are there. Calcium deposition is obviously crocodile, turtles, lizard, lizard. Okay. Bodies covered with scales, scoots, and hard plate. Not the scales like fishes used to have, but that hard uh, covering is there. Body is literally very hard. And do not all the time think about lizard all the time in your brain while you think about it. You can think about the crocodile also while you talk about the property. We have a bilateral symmetry, symmetry complete digestive system. And you have learned in all of the category, the heart is two-chambered, three-chambered, wherever heart is, right? A closed uh, circulatory system because not wherever heart wherever blood vessels. Okay, so they have a closed circulatory system. And they all are the true silomates. You can write this by default property, bilateral symmetry. Okay, so let me see if any other point is there. They are oviparous because they are releasing, forming the eggs. Anything else is left? Respiration. Ha, body, head, neck, trunk, and tail. Their body is divided into. Where do I write? Body is divided into head, head region, neck, trunk. Trunk means the main abdominal region, you know, throughout the chest and, you know, abdominal and tail. Uh, now let me think if any other point is left. I suppose that's done. You can just talk about that they are the true silomates and uh, they have a well-developed body system. Uh, they have all organ system of, you know, level of, or because actually even if you don't write it now, you can write it, but you know, that's common th thing. That from the cordate, they all have the organ system level of organization in their body. You can mention. You can mention. They have a complete digestive system. So with this, guys, we are done with the reptiles category. Now let's move forward and let's talk about the avies. They are the birds. First of all, bird can fly. They can fly because they can reduce their body structure. They have a skeletal system into them. They have bones into them. But still they can fly because they are able to reduce their body weight. They are having uh, uh, hollow bones. And most of them are fused to reduce body weight. Hollow bone means internally it's hollow. If you are non-vegetarian, you must have seen the bones of the bird. If you have witnessed a bird somehow. I don't do it, but yeah. 
anyways uh, this bone type is known as pneumatic bones so if a one mark question come in your paper what are pneumatic bones these are the hollow bones which are present in the aves they are uh, four they are having four chambered hard closed circulation breathe through the lungs they have a four limbs four limbs modified into wings actually limbs means four limbs these are the four limbs and if i talk about the legs they are the hind limbs not all the time these limbs are modified like in the birds uh, case four li uh, limbs are there but four limbs are modified into wings uh, sorry four limbs are modified into wings which is helping in the flight and hind limbs are like normally present and they have a pentadactyl limbs pentadactyl limbs means five their bones are five like we do have our in hand there are five bones into their fingers and all okay so their jaws are modified into beaks the exoskeleton is in the form of uh, feathers and uh, in certain cases claws streamlined body to reduce the friction while the time they fly they also have the cloaca they are the uriotelic na no, sorry uriotelic problem uricotelic they are the uricotelic hard thing is uri uric acid only they are uricotelic the waste product is uric acid and yeah bilateral symmetry complete digestive system closed circle that's a by default things guys that you can write okay so bird they have a very keen sense of light where do i write hold on let me change the screen they have very keen sense of light heart is four chambered ho gaya let me see yeah they are also oviparous oviparous their eggs are you know covered by the shell obviously which is having the calcareous shell calcium calcareous shell sorry you know especially uh, if you have been into any poultry farm they are also the birds they also are oviparous they also have the calcareous shell so they need have very calcium level you know diet so birds can collect it from here and there but then if i talk about the one that we are doing for the commercial purpose we especially give them this diet anyways uh, let me see anything else is left yeah with the help of wings and the limbs they can walk they can fly they can uh, swim also so these are you know modified a uh, plumage and pelage hmm actually feather on to your body now this is known as plumage p l u m a g in case of human we call it as a pelage plumage is all feathers present on your body throughout the body yeah that's it anyways guys so i don't think i have to tell you many examples on this sparrow parrot and all please but one thing i would like to, oh god i have a video on reptiles and birds i forgot to show you guys sorry i'm going to start my screen share and i'll show you those two video and then we will talk about the mammals category which is the last and not time consuming i was forgetting but i am forgetting something i am forgetting to show you the video so the first video that i have on the basis of reptiles now you will not be able to listen to me because you're going to listen to this person let me start the screen share again share computer sound listen to the woman or the man who is going to speak hi everyone today we're going to learn about reptiles reptile is the name for a large group of animals reptiles are vertebrates which means they have backbones they are also cold blooded have scaly skin and lay eggs When we say that reptiles are cold-blooded, that does not mean that they are cold. It just means that they cannot keep their bodies the right temperature without help. To warm up, reptiles move somewhere warmer, often a nice sunny rock. To cool down, reptiles move somewhere cooler, perhaps into the water or a nice shady burrow. Because of this, reptiles mainly live places where it does not get too cold. This is probably why reptiles live on every continent except for Antarctica. 
Their skin is one good way to tell if the animal you are looking at is a reptile or an amphibian. Reptile scaly skin is dry and watertight. It may be rough or smooth, dull or shiny, but never slimy. If you see an animal that looks like a snake or a lizard, but it has wet or slimy skin, you're probably looking at an amphibian instead of a reptile. Almost all reptiles lay eggs, although some give birth to live young. Unlike birds' eggs which have hard shells, reptile eggs are soft and leathery. Unlike amphibians, reptiles lay their eggs on land. Even reptiles that spend most of their time in the water, like alligators and sea turtles, lay their eggs on dry land. Reptiles are fascinating creatures and come in many different shapes and sizes. Some people even keep reptiles as pets. Some reptiles make good pets. And some would make very bad pets. I hope you enjoyed learning about reptiles today. Goodbye till next time. I hope you're not going to see this in your dreams now. But that's, that was a nice video. You know, that's another way of learning uh, all about, you know, uh, categories. Because once you see videos, these things settle up in your brain and you can just simply write it. I suppose now after watching this diversity chapter is going to be easy for you because now you learn example first and then you will be able to write the properties. One thing, you have to just do two things. One, you learn the example. Second, you see the animal. And um, third, uh, just learn basis of classification because those uh, basis of classification has all the terminologies. On the basis of those terminology, by looking at it, you can talk in biological language, can't you? Okay, so this video is actually showing internal body parts of the bird, like a jungle bird. Now look at it. It is a 3D bird anatomy software. Uh, we do all that. Skeleton, that's sternum, lungs, and turn out the skeleton part, but you see. Respiratory system is this. Okay. Urogenital. Urogenital means excretory system and the genital reproductive system. That's present. And that's a cloaca thing, you know, up there. Okay. Ovary. Skeletal system is the most beautiful part. This is the sternum. This is the ulna, bones, you know. This is cervical vertebrae. Spinal cord, a little green. Actually, the most important thing which is present into the bird is that there is a collar bone. Like we do have this collar bone present in a separate way. The collar bone is jointed up there. It appears to be like a V-shape. V-shape, no. So collar bones are jointed. We call it as the furcula. F-U-R-C-U-L-A. I'm going to write it here. They have a V-bone. What happened? They have a... Percula, which is a V-shaped collarbone. And their sound box is known as syrinx. We do have the larynx, they have the syrinx. That's it.
Now that's all about the AVs. You have seen the videos of uh, reptiles and birds. Let's talk about the last category, which is mammals. I don't think any explanation is needed on that, but yeah. Mammals. They are known as the mammals because they have a special gland present into, into their body. We call it as the memory glands, which are the milk glands. They can feed their baby and that's why we all are the mammalians. They are warm-blooded, breathe through the lungs, have a four-chambered heart, presence of hair on the body. We call it as the palate. And they have the sweat gland, oil gland, tear glands. They have all kind of glands. You know, they have a proper endocrine system into them. You can just talk about it. They have the endocrine system. They have the nervous system. They have pre presence of pinna. The external pinna is present. This is only present in the mammals. They have the memory gland to feed the young one. They usually give birth to the young one. So they are the VV parents. Some of them are over VV parents also, but that's a rare case. We don't have to get into that now. So if I have mentioned oviparous also, examples are platypus, duck-billed platypus and echidna. They are the exceptions. Ha, to rest, you can just write that they can show different kind of movement. They have forelimb, hind limb, pentadectile limb, which are well developed for so walking, swimming, running. Their facial muscles or facial bones are very much developed because we can show a number of facial activities. Uh, anything else is left? And yeah, they are the only animal which are producing the milk because of the memory glands. I think we are almost done. And they have a separate opening. You can say they have a proper organ system. We are basically ureotelic. We produce urea as a nitrogenous waste. We have a proper separate organ system, digestive system, excretory system, reproductive system, which open up through the different openings. No cloaca is there. And these are the points that you can remember. Example, I have to tell you literally, no. Okay. So now, guys, I suppose there's this one, two question, but that's fine. I'll make the question last. Explain how in animals in uh, vertebrate are classified into further subgroup, Pisces and tetrapod. Okay, so I have added a blank slide there. Let me think about certain questions. And you try to think about the answer. So first question is, uh, yeah, um, an organism is having a slimy skin and it is crawling and this is oviparous. Identify it up, whether it is uh, amphibian or reptile. So obviously you will click on the amphibian, reason being a slimy skin because you know they respire through it. If it is a hard covering, then yeah. Okay, now next. Uh, tear glands and oil glands are present in which of the following examples? So if they are having the mammals, you can just click on the mammals. So tear glands and oil glands are also in birds. So if that's in the bird, you can just take it up. Okay. Cloaca. This is present in avis and uh, avis and amphibians. Amphibians? Did I mention the amphibians? What's wrong with me? Yeah, amphibians. Strong. Amphibians. So that's how you can just write a number of examples. Next question that you can have is differences between the cartilaginous fishes and bony fishes. So I think you can just clearly write it because you have seen the picture, you have seen so many things in this. So these uh, questions that you can just do it by yourself. And this is very, very important question. You can have that a three or four marks question in your board exam. So with this, guys, we are done with the discussion on diversity in living organism. I'm going to stop the screen share and now you will be able to see me only. So what I want to say that we have covered all the topics. We have learned about all the five kingdom systems. We have seen a lot of pictures, a lot of pic videos. And I suppose everything must be clear to you. If nothing is clear to you, still now there are a few things which are not clear, watch the video again. Because I don't think there's anything that you were not able to understand. But then still... Ask the teacher in your class, in your session with Ask ITN. Second, you can post your query on the discussion board. You can come on the website, Ask Expert. Click on it. 
can just post the question. Second, you can go into the, your student account and you can, you can click on discussion board and just throw a question up there. Everything is going to be answered. Till the time, please do not waste your time just listening to me because we are done with the topic. All I'm going to speak is wake. So bye and take care. Thank you.